The Honourable Damien O'Connor. Speaker, to the previous national speaker who said he feels upbeat because he's leaving Parliament, well, I can say to him, we've got a deal for the whole lot of you, and we're do going to do our best to get rid of the whole lot of you. It can all feel upbeat. Mr Speaker, this is a government that says we should be celebrating growth. And the question I say is, for who? Because at a time that the world's asking about growth, perpetual growth and what it's doing to the environment and what it's doing to the world's population, New Zealanders are asking the question, what's all this growth done for me, Mr Speaker? And I couldn't say it in any better way than in an email that I received today. Quote, traditionally I've been an avid national supporter, however I've lost all confidence in national. I've finally seen from my own eyes the extent of the gap that is growing between the wealthy elite and the rest of New Zealand. I've always considered myself, that member should read it because it's one of his constituents. <laughs> I've always considered myself to fit into the category of an upper echelon income earners. However, the realisation that it is the tier below the wealthy elite that is being thrashed the very hardest. The good Kiwi, old Kiwi business per person, working hard, taking risks, investing everything they have financially and emotionally into their business, only to be constantly beaten down by the elitist policies that have been implemented over the past eight years by John Key and his band of self-serving merry men. Accordingly, Labor can count on my support at the next election. That's one of your constituents. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Order. I'm sure, Mr Speaker, backed up backed up by the release today from the Salvation Army, Mr Speaker. Oh, he's going to discredit the Salvation Army. Mr Speaker, this is an organisation entrenched in our society and the societies around the world of looking after the most needy. Mr Speaker, the title of the report is off the track because, Mr Speaker, they say that all the economic reports cannot fully capture what is happening in the lives of ordinary New Zealanders at a social and personal level. Mr Speaker, I respect this organisation, and they have given us a report here saying three key things, seemingly entrenched rates of child poverty and child abuse. Mr Speaker, over 200,000 children in this country in poverty after eight years of a national government. The second thing, Mr Speaker, the burgeoning incarceration rates of prisoners along with high recidivism rates. Mr Speaker, over 10,200 prisoners in our prisons and the national government is going to spend a billion dollars, a billion dollars on new prisons when they won't support Salisbury School in Nelson to look after the kids who are at risk, Mr Speaker. Over 70% of the prisoners in our prisons are illiterate because the national government refuses to spend money in special education and look after those children and give them an opportunity, Mr Speaker, when parents are expected to pay more for education, and they, many of them can't, Mr Speaker, those kids have no hope and the national government's prepared to spend the, to grow employment in prisons not out in the real world. When they crow about growing employment, but they know that a three-hour-a-week job is so-called employment. Mr Speaker, it is an outrageous indictment on any government that we should end up with these uh, statistics. Mr Speaker, the third thing that, that Salvation Army has said, an alarming lack of safe, affordable housing that's resulted in a level of homelessness not seen New Zealand, in New Zealand in the lifetime of most Kiwis. Mr Speaker, 41,000 Kiwis homeless and tens of thousands in overcrowded, cold and damp houses through this country, and the minister over there will blame the councils, while they sell off state houses to their mates to flog them off for a big fat profit, and then turn around and say, oh, well, the market will decide. Mr Speaker, it is an outrage what this government has done to New Zealand, and under the premise of growth and the trickle-down theory of the rich pissing on the poor, Mr Speaker, these guys are prepared to endorse that and then turn around order, and try order, and convince order, New Zealanders order, that we're order. all better off. I, I think the tone of the members' comments uh, could improve. I, I, I withdraw, Mr Speaker. I cannot say my speech in a strong enough way to endorse what is a very comprehensive report from the organisation that is 
expected to time and time again pick up people literally off the streets and look after them because this government Order. has trampled Order. on them in its eight Order. years of government.